What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel and today we are going to talk about RabbitMQ. And RabbitMQ is one of the most popular message brokers and I found that together with Python people usually use RabbitMQ over other message brokers like for example Kafka. Even though Kafka is quite popular as a message broker, if you are a Python developer I would recommend you learn RabbitMQ because uh, if you're going to build applications using Python most likely you're going to use RabbitMQ as a message broker. So in this video we are going to learn the fundamentals of RabbitMQ and how to interact with it using Python and Pika library. And before I start I wanted to say that I will not go into the details of why RabbitMQ is important and why you need to use it but if you're curious I have another video on that topic link will be in the description. So with that said let's dive in. RabbitMQ is a message broker that implements different protocols, but most importantly, it implements the MQP, Advanced Message Queue Protocol. And this protocol was designed for systems to exchange messages using producers, brokers, and consumers. Producer, believe it or not, but it produces messages. Consumer consumes them, and in between we have a broker that receives messages from the producer and sends them to consumers. Okay, now let's take a look at how the broker works. The broker has three components and the first component is exchange. This component receives messages from the producer and then routes these messages to the queue. Also, when we create an exchange, we specify an exchange type. There are different exchange types and we will talk about every one of them a little bit later. But for now, let's move on to the second component. And the second component is queue. Queue is a data structure on disk or in memory that stores messages. And the last component is binding. Binding is a connection between an exchange and a queue, which tells an exchange what messages should be delivered to what queues. Now, let's talk about different exchange types. All of these components that I was trying to explain to you it's quite difficult to understand them without looking at any examples. But right now, you will see all of this in practice. And if you didn't understand something, it should become much more clear now. So the first exchange type is direct. And an exchange with this type sends messages to the queue where routing key equals to binding key. And if you look at the picture, we have one exchange and three queues. And the first queue is bound to an exchange with binding key A the second with binding key B, and the last one with binding key C. And when producer sends a message to an exchange, it specifies a routing key. And the routing key equals to B, and we only have one queue with the same key, and it's the second queue. So the second queue receives this message. Another exchange type is topic. Exchange with this type sends messages to queues where routing key partially matched to binding key. So as you can see, we have three different binding keys here. And if you are familiar with regular expressions, the syntax of binding key is quite similar. For example, the first binding key is order dot star. And it means that if routing key starts from order dot, the message will go to this queue. Another example is the last binding key, star dot notify, and it means that if routing key ends with dot notify, the message will go to this queue. So only the first and the last queue received the message that producer sent. The second queue didn't receive the message because uh, the keys didn't match. Another exchange type is fanout. Exchange with this type sends messages to all the queues that it knows about. So it doesn't matter what routing key we have, it doesn't matter what binding keys we have. If the queue is bound to an exchange, it will receive a message anyway. And the last exchange type is header. Exchange with this type allows you to route messages based on header values instead of routing keys. I'll not go into the details here since it works pretty much the same as previous exchange types. Now, before we dive into Python and Pico library, I wanted to mention the last thing about RabbitMQ, and it's the fact that RabbitMQ has nameless exchange by default. And this exchange compares routing key to queue name instead of binding key. So if you publish a message 
to this nameless exchange with routing key equals to order. This exchange will route this message to the queue with queue name equals to order. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to say about RabbitMQ. Now you should have a clear understanding of how RabbitMQ works, I hope. Now let's talk about how to create a simple Python program. It will help us to better understand producer, broker and consumer flow. In our program we will use Pico library, which is a RabbitMQ client library for Python. And this library is not built into Python, so let's install it right now. Also, I assume that you have already installed RabbitMQ on your machine. I'm not going to show you how to do that because there are a lot of tutorials like that online. But if, if you didn't do that, I would suggest you run it in Docker. If you know how to use Docker. Personally, I don't like to install things like RabbitMQ, Redis, PostgreSQL, all of this stuff. I prefer to just create a Docker container and don't think about it. So that's what we are going to do now. Let's uh, run RabbitMQ in uh, Docker container. That's what you need to type in order to run RabbitMQ. Now let's start writing some scripts. We will have three scripts in total. The first one will be for publishing messages and, the, and two other scripts will be for consuming. So let's start from publishing. In this script, what we do first is we connect to RabbitMQ. Then we declare an exchange and the name of the exchange will be order. And an exchange type will be direct. Then we, let's say, have some information about the order. And we publish two messages. Both of these messages will go to the same exchange to order exchange but the first message will have routing key order that notify and the, the information that we will send in this message will be just user email and the second message will have routing key order that report and we will send all of the information that we have about order in this message so let's try to run this script. So what we do is publish that Python publish that by. Now when we send two messages to RabbitMQ, let's open management in the browser. So we have this URL localhost 15672 and we can type username guest and password guest and click on log in. And if we open exchanges, we will see that we have order exchange with type direct. Even though we send two messages, one with routing key order that notify and the second one with routing key order that report, these messages went nowhere because we don't have any queues that are bound to our exchange. So let's create a consumer that will consume notify messages. So we have this notify.py file. The same as in publish.py file, first of all, what we do is we connect to RabbitMQ. However, then we declare a new queue and the queue will have a name order notify. Then we create a binding between our exchange with name order and our new queue and the binding key will be order that notify and then we are trying to consume messages so we call this basic consume method this uh, method takes two parameters and it's a callback and a queue name and this callback is basically our consumer it will be called when the new when it receives a new message and first three lines are quite easy to understand we just get a payload and print two messages. Probably the most confusing line is uh, the last one, when we call basic ACQ method. And basic ACQ is basic acknowledgement. So we are basically trying to send an acknowledgement to RabbitMQ. And we are trying to say that the message was successfully 
received and processed, and RabbitMQ is free to delete this message. This acknowledgement is useful when, let's say, our consumer receives a message, but it dies for some reason. In that case, the message will not disappear from a queue because our consumer wasn't able to process the message and it didn't send an acknowledgement to RabbitMQ. So it didn't tell RabbitMQ that this message can be deleted. Now let's try to run these two scripts that we have, publish.py and notify.py. And let's see. First of all, let's run notify.py script. So this script is waiting for notify messages. Let's publish some messages. As you can see, it's working. Now let's move on to the second script. And this script is going to consume report messages. So our report.py file is almost the same as notify.py file. We also declare a new queue. The name of the queue is order report and we also create a binding between a queue and exchange order. The binding key is order.report now. And we also have a callback function that processes our message and it sends an acknowledgement at the end. Let's try to run the script. And as you can see, the script is working and we were able to consume all our messages, notify message and report message. Okay, that's it for today, guys. If you are still watching this video, I appreciate it so much. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Dennis and this channel is all about machine web development and growing as a full stack Python web developer. If that appeals to you, consider subscribing and if you'd like to connect with me even further, you can follow me on Twitter or on my Instagram. Links will be in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.